the intention here. Rule one forecasting is very difficult, especially when it confirms when it uh, it relates uh, to the future, right? Two, by all means give a number and by all means give a time, but never give a number and a time together. This is in relation to how we interact with Wall Street. Give a number, give a time, but don't give a number at a time. <coughs> number three, in the absence of all other information, history is always a good predicator of the future. You know, uh, as the old famous saying goes, those who don't uh, ignore history at their peril are doomed to repeat it. And uh, so this was the third rule of forecasting that came out of this experience that we had. The future looks very much like the present, only longer. So these were some of the key takeaways of the learnings that we, we got through this experience uh, that we were confronted with as a large global company. So, the key observation, and I'll talk about this in a minute, now I'll talk about some specific examples in the context of 3M. This to me is the heart of 3M. Innovation is not a fad. You know, I get a lot of questions about this whole Jugaad philosophy that everybody in India talks about. And, and I kind of hate that word. Because to me, that always has a connotation of this Eureka moment, of this light bulb moment. And this one very cool idea. But to be able to do that 110 years, quarter after quarter for 110 years, is a different, is a different ball game. The other thing that I noticed out here is what we call the other day I was called in to talk to, uh, uh, as a panel, to judge a bunch of uh, small and medium enterprises for the ET Now Awards of, of emerging leaders. And so we had these, a lot of these medium and small scale uh, entrepreneurs who were, who were trying to be recognized. And I was really surprised to see that for, for whatever reason, there was there's always a great focus on growing the top line. And to me, it's always about profitable growth, what we call quality growth. It's not about top-line growth for the sake of top-line growth. And the third part is really an organization's DNA, the culture of the organization. We have a very, very unique culture. You know, irrespective, you walk into a 3M office in, in Japan, France, China, Korea, the minute you walk in, you'll know you're in a 3M facility. Uh, we really have a very, very unique culture of our own. So I, I'll talk about some of those, uh, how we, how we uh, drive innovation at 3M. And I'm not going to talk through all this in the interest of time, uh, but I'll just pick on a few few uh, areas. I'll talk about, you know, we have this, what we have called a 3M, uh, what we call the 15% culture rule, where every employee in the company is allowed to spend 15% of his time working on his own personal pet project. And the number of uh, innovations that have emerged out of that 15% type culture, which many other companies have now started uh, replicating, whether it be Google or some of the other companies as well, the other thing which I think is very, very unique in 3M is this culture of collaboration. You know, I often find in India, there is always a perception that knowledge is power. And there is always a, you know, I, this is my own experience uh, as a fellow countryman, is that we are outstanding at individual efforts, but we are not always the greatest team players. And uh, this is one of the things that I've learned in my 25 years with 3M is the value of being part of a team. So I won't go into all these other elements of, of innovation at 3M. Basically, you know, when I talk to people, and you saw that video, people ask me, what's the connection? You know, what's, what's a company making post-its, doing making Lippmann stethoscopes, or, or making uh, drug delivery patches, or inhalers, and making uh, scotch bright uh, scouring pads? What's the connection, you know? And I always point out, 3M is at, at its heart a technology company. I was talking to some of the ladies in the room just now, when we were before I came here, and uh, you know, I, I, whenever I talk to people in India, they always associate us with post-it bags, Scotch Bride, Scotch Guard, Scotch Tape, and I always uh, say that at the heart of it, it is these core technologies that are that really are uh, hold the company together. So what we do is we take this whole bunch of uh, technologies, combine them in, in various ways, and come up with solutions for different industries. So this is really the, the what makes 3M unique. There is no other company like that in the world that has this basket of technologies 
that we can dip into and come up with unique solutions. And many of our solutions are always driven by what I call customer-inspired innovation. A lot of our innovation, yesterday I had this gentleman from uh, Ashok Leyland, uh, the, the, the managing director, you uh, know, he was in our research and development center in, in, uh, in uh, Bangalore. And uh, he was walking around this and he came and he said, you know, we showed him about a product that we use for making windmills. He says, have you guys ever thought about using that same technology to reduce drag on cars on our trucks that Ashok Leyland makes so we can get better fuel efficiency? So, you know, here we get ideas really by listening to our customers. But what's, what's really important is being able to capture that unarticulated need. It's very easy to capture the articulated need. If somebody voices a pain point, to find a solution to that pain is relatively easy for a company like ours. What's really challenging is finding a solution to an unartic unarticulated pain. And that's something that we are, we are pretty good at. Here's an example of a technology that we developed called micro-replication. And you'll see, we started off with overhead projectors. Many of you people in this room have never seen an overhead projector in your life. Uh, this generation doesn't understand what an overhead projector is. But we started with a, what, was a, what, a, what was a Fresnel lens to make an overhead projector. And from that one technology, it emerged a whole host of solutions from one core technology. That is kind of the heart of the magic of 3M, is that ability to take this one core idea merge it with multiple other ideas and come up with this uh, unique solution. Uh, I won't go through all these details in the interest of time. Uh, so people often ask me, how do you measure success? How do you measure innovation at 3M? The key metric we use in 3M to, to measure innovation is what we call the New Product Vitality Index, which is really saying that 20, 40, at this juncture it's 35% of our sales comes from new products that did not exist five years ago. In other words, 35% of what I sell today, I will not be selling five years from today. Now for a $30 billion com dollar company to do that is not an easy task. So we kill ourselves before the market kills us. We, we, we reinvigorate ourselves uh, before the market kills us. Uh, again, we have a very, very unique uh, characteristics. We have, a, we have a structure where we operate in multiple market segments, multiple geographies with multiple technologies, leveraging multiple, multiple intellectual property, multiple manufacturing uh, plants, and multiple brands. And then we leverage those against all these different functional areas, uh, technology, uh, country structure, and so we have a very unique, uh, very unique model here in 3M uh, in terms of how we drive uh, innovation in 3M. <laughs> and again, in, uh, to sort of come, come close to uh, closing up in the interest of time and to hopefully leave some time for Q&A, uh, I'm not going to go through each of these bullets, but really this is the heart of how we were able to survive in tough times and good times by sticking to what our belief system is. You know, we are a Midwest company from, from, from heart of the, uh, Central America, farming community, people who get up at 5 o'clock in the morning, uh, they are out milking the cows. You see, most of our leadership in 3M don't come from uh, the Ivy League colleges. You know, we come from the University of Idaho, University of Iowa, University of, uh, uh, you know, we are a very hands-on, son of the soil, roll up your sleeve, kind of culture uh, in 3M. So we, these are some of the, the, the key, and you, you know, I, I was uh, very impressed when you made that comment about ethics and integrity. This is, so the, this slide was prepared even before the comment was made, and I know that this college puts a lot of uh, emphasis on that. And that's why I think this is so appropriate, because one of the things 3M is known for is probably being one of the most ethical companies in the world. And in some of the markets that we operate in, like China, like India, like Indonesia, it's not always easy. But I think it has worked for us, it has paid dividends for us. People know that when you're dealing with, with 3M, you're not going to bend the rules. You know, we have a high tolerance for mistakes. You know, one of the things that I again talk at a lot of the university campuses is that one of the problems in India is that uh, we, failure is not well looked, up, looked on. We have a huge fear of failure in India. It's a stigma. In 3M, it's almost a badge of honor. 
Uh, and, uh, you know, but the one thing that we do have zero tolerance for is unethical behavior. I don't mind if you make a mistake, you try a new idea, it doesn't fail, you, you, you spend some of the company's money, I'm okay with that. But the one area where we have zero tolerance is in the area of ethics and integrity. So, you know, this starts from uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. McKnight, who was our longest serving chairman of the company for many, many years. And he laid down some of these fundamental philosophies that we even adhere to even today. And here are some of his thoughts. And I won't again go through it. You know, we talk about delegating. We talk about allowing people to exercise their, innovation, their, their initiative. Allowing people to do jobs in their own way. We look at mistakes will be made. And we have huge tolerance for mistakes in this company. For, for failure. And this is one of the things that I believe has really driven innovation in 3M. And this is one thing I would encourage all of you all to, if you don't try, you will never know. Be always ready to experiment. You know, failure is not a, is not a bad thing. So, we have what we call leadership attributes. Everyone in our company is measured uh, against these six leadership attributes. Every one of us is, this is on our report card. And this is what, when your, when your annual appraisals are done of all our employees, these are the elements that we are measured by. Again, this comes back from that whole outside-in thinking. You know, sometimes in a large company, it's, uh, it's easy to fall into that trap of becoming very incestuous in how you operate. You know, my way is the right way. You know, you know it's my way or the highway. You know, and any other way is the wrong way. You know, so I think this is another key attribute that we encourage. We, we look at how our people are able to drive innovation and growth. This is another key element of ours, is how we develop, teach and engage others. There's a huge culture of sharing knowledge, teaching people. People take great pride in this. I spent, as the managing director of the company, I spend in excess of 60% of my time really focusing on developing the future leaders. The day-to-day -day running of the company is managed by a great team of people. Uh, but this is an area we put a lot of focus on. We talk about courageous decisions. This is an attribute which, which we're not here on many companies' report cards. That they, this is not something that people in most companies get recognized for, is taking courageous, bold uh, actions. Energy, passion, and this last one, lives three of values. This is what I talked about. So, you know, we have a very core set of uh, values that we in 3 live by. Uh, and uh, so, if I look back, this is kind of my closing slide. Uh, is really that uh, these are the attributes that has helped us continue to de deliver. We have paid dividends to our shareholders consecutively, quarter on quarter for the last 60 years. We have not missed a quarter of paying dividends to our shareholders. And these are the kinds of things that have allowed us to survive through tough times We've been around for 125 years, we will be around for another 125. So I will be accepting resumes after this meeting. <laughs> <laughs> all right, thank you all for your time.